This is a study looking at patients who've had facial trauma who are being transferred from one hospital to another to receive their definitive care. Very often in our hospital systems, it's felt that another hospital can provide a higher level of care for certain conditions. This is particularly true of trauma centers that specialize in the treatment of patients that have had injuries related to accidents. The initial hospital that the patient's brought to calls that trauma center and requests to send the patient there. The study uh, today looks at a national data bank from 2017 to 2015 and identified over 170,000 patients who were transferred with facial trauma. They then focused on only those patients that had facial injuries and no other injuries. They found several trends during this period of time, including that throughout the period, the patients tended to be older, they were more frequently insured, and over time, they underwent fewer immediate surgeries to correct their injuries and were more often discharged from the emergency room at the transfer center. For the sake of time, I'm just going to focus on the last of these findings. Why were so many of these patients sent home from the ER in the trauma center? Now, this is something that we would call over triage. That is, the patient really should have never been transferred. They should have been sent home from the initial facility. Many facial injuries result in broken bones that, although they may require surgery, do not need to have an immediate operation and can be safely sent home for follow-up from the doctor's office. Transferring a patient involves an ambulance, sometimes even a helicopter expense, and inconvenience certainly for the patients. Additionally, it can overburden the trauma centers. This is important as there are fewer and fewer of these. From 1990 to 2005, the number of trauma centers dropped by 30%. Frankly, it would be much better were those patients sent home from the initial hospital if that were safe. Now, there are many potential solutions to this problem, but first and foremost is to improve communication between the hospitals. Specialists in craniofacial surgery are most often the doctors who care for these patients, and they are often not involved in the process of a transfer. The transfer is frequently just between the two emergency rooms, and the surgeon is not involved. Involving that specialist would increase the chance that a transfer could be avoided, particularly if the specialists at the trauma center had access to the patient's records and x-rays. Now, during this pandemic, Legislation was enacted to facilitate use of telemedicine by providers, largely by improving the ability to bill for these consultations. Using telemedicine could allow the specialist at the trauma center to see the patient and the x-rays and help the doctors at the first hospital to understand what the most appropriate next steps are in the care of that patient. And significantly, if they could safely be sent home with follow-up. This would go a long way to preventing unnecessary transfers and simplifying the care of these patients.